Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I received a package in the mail and I am super excited about this, guys. Um, this is from DF Robots and let, let's open it up so I can show you because lately I've been looking for a Raspberry Pi alternative. Now I have the Pi 1, 2, 3, and 0. But it's lacking in power. I'm not done with the Raspberry Pi by any means at all. I love the Pi very much. But I've been looking for a single board computer with a little more oomph if you know what I mean. So let's get into here and I'll show you what I got today. This is the Latte Panda. It's an x86 single board development computer. It has a quad core Atom X5 8300 at 1.8 gigahertz. This, this model here has two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabyte onboard storage. They do make a Another model with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. So in the box here, we have the Wi-Fi antenna because the Latte Panda has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0 built in. So real quick, let's do a size comparison. This is a Raspberry Pi 2 and it's the same size as a Raspberry Pi 3. As you can see, the Latte Panda is a bit wider, but it's the same length. I'm not worried about the size so much. It's not much bigger, and if we can get the extra power out of it, it's definitely worth the extra size increase. Okay, so this particular model has 2GB of DDR3 RAM, 32GB onboard storage, and it comes with Windows 10 pre-installed. Now this is Windows 10 Home, it's not a Windows RT, this is full-fledged Windows 10. has a Z8300 Intel Atom CPU, and it turbos up to 1.8 GHz, it's 1.4 GHz, but it will turbo. HD graphics built in. Let's check out the ports here. So over on this side we have the HDMI, the USB 3.0, and two USB 2.0 ports. On the other side, we have our Ethernet micro SD card slot for extra storage and our power adapter, which is a micro USB cable. It needs a two amp power supply and a really good cable. We also have the audio out jack here. Over here, we have a reset and a power button with some extra GPIO pins. Now this is fully Arduino compatible built-in Wi-Fi, built-in Bluetooth, and hopefully this thing will kick some butt. My main plan is to run a lot of emulators on it, but before we do that, I just want to test out the Windows 10 operating system that comes with it. So with all that said, let's head over, let's get the first boot, and I'll just run a few browser benchmarks and possibly a Geekbench. Okay, so I'm booted up to the Windows 10 desktop. This is the second boot. It actually boots fairly fast, but I know there's not a lot of stuff cluttering up the operating system right now. This is pretty much a fresh install of Windows, and it I would expect it to boot decently fast with the eMMC storage built in. It's not going to be as fast as an SSD, and it might not even hit the speeds of a 7200 RPM hard drive, but for this tiny board, it's going to be fine. I inserted a 32 gigabyte SD card in here too just to get a little extra storage for my downloads. I enabled Wi-Fi and I downloaded Geekbench. Let's press Control, Shift, Escape. That'll bring Task Manager up. And we'll go to Performance. So it has the Intel Atom X5 Z83 CPU at 1.4 gigahertz, four physical cores, two gigabytes of built-in RAM. Windows is using 876 megabytes right now. But as soon as I go in and I turn off Windows Defender, Cortana, and a bunch of other unnecessary applications that are built into Windows 10, I should be able to free up close to 200 megabytes of RAM, which we'll definitely benefit from with this tiny little board. Disk usage seems pretty high right now for not doing anything. It may be downloading updates in the background. I'm not sure. I'll definitely let you guys know about that in the next video. That's probably exactly what it's doing. No Ethernet connected, got my Wi-Fi, and no Bluetooth connected. So I'm going to open up the Edge browser here. I haven't downloaded any other browser. I usually use Chrome, 
but since this is built in, we're gonna use this one. We're gonna run two online JavaScript benchmarks. First one is SunSpider. Now I know this is an older benchmark, but I have run it on pretty much every single device I have ever owned. So I'm familiar with a decent score. Start now. 484 milliseconds, that's actually really good for a little Atom processor. Now this score will differ on different browsers. Um, in Chrome, it may score higher. I've noticed that Edge does really good with this benchmark. For reference, my Raspberry Pi 3, when I run this same benchmark in Raspbian, under their browser, which I think is based on Firefox, scores a 3000 to a 3800. Now remember, lower score is better. And judging by the score we just got, this unit is a lot faster than the Raspberry Pi 3. So the next benchmark we're gonna run is Octane 2.0. So with the Octane score, we scored a 6,570. For reference, my Raspberry Pi 3 scores 530 to 600. And higher is better. So yeah, definitely, we have a faster board here. And it runs Windows. There are tons of emulators for Windows. Also, if we can free up some RAM on this two gigabyte board, we should do pretty well with some emulation. This board may even run lower end games like Dota and Minecraft. I'm going to definitely make a few videos on that, but before we get out of here, let's do a Geekbench. Now, I did pre-install Geekbench here. So the Geekbench came in at a single core score of 672 and a multi-core score of 2,132. Now, I didn't even check the temps on this, but I have heard rumor that this thing throttles down to as low as 600 megahertz when it starts overheating. If that's the case, we're going to have to figure out some cooling for this. A simple fan or maybe even a passive heatsink would work with this small little CPU. That's it for now. In my next few videos, I'm going to download Steam. I have a few games on there that will probably run on here. We're going to try League of Legends, Dota, old school games like Portal and Half-Life 2. Then we're going to move on to some real fun stuff, some SNES, N64, PlayStation, and possibly even some Dreamcast emulation. As of right now, I'm not sure if I'm going to be running it inside of Windows 10 because I haven't really messed with this unit yet. But if I'm able to get Laka to boot from a USB drive, I will probably use Laka. If not, we'll use RetroArch within Windows 10, and it should work pretty well. I appreciate you watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe because I have a lot more coming from the Latte Panda. I will also be doing some retro pie and recall box tutorials very soon, so bear with me here, guys. Like always, thanks for watching.